Hi guys! Recently I've been asked to create some species specific care guides. Uh, basically a how-to to keep certain species of isopods that are pre pretty common in the hobby. I thought I would start off with one of my favorite colonies, the Armadillidium vulgari Magic Potion, the Japanese line. A little bit about these guys. They are derived from your common pillbug, roly poly. The gray guys that we all have in our backyards and have played with at some point. Uh, they have a genetic mutation that allows them to not only lose pigmentation, but to gain a very distinct patterning of electric yellow and black spots all over their little bodies. They are a very prolific species, uh, the Japanese line is. The American line is a little bit bigger, and they max out at about two centimeters. The Japanese line, as you can see, these are mostly adults, and they are one and a half centimeters to close to two centimeters. So they do get almost as big as their American counterparts. The Japanese line breeds faster more often. They also have larger broods than the American line. Uh, this makes them very easy for hobbyists that use them in terraria or in their reptile enclosures as cleanup crew. They are not very good as feeders because they have an extremely tough outer exoskeleton, which does make it difficult for certain animals to snack on them. The Exoskeleton provides strength for the isopod. We are told, this has not been tested, but we are told that they can survive getting run over by a car, which is amazing to think of. And I'm not sure who figured that one out, but cheers to them. Uh, this is a 12 quart shoebox, the Sterilite brand that you can get at Walmart. It does have locking edges because I feel safer that way if they're locked in. Um, to set up a bin like this, you do need four to five vent holes on the side, both sides to allow for cross ventilation. These are about one one and a half inch drill bit holes with just some mesh super glued over the top of it on the outside so they can't get out. Um, the lid is unmodified. They have several pieces of cork bark. They have some poplar bark. Um, in here we also have a decently sized sphagnum moss portion for hydration. This center part here is moist but not overly so. So you would have your most damp spot on the side with the moss. Then you would have a gradient where the substrate is very moist, a little moist, and then it tapers off to a drier end. This species in particular seems to appreciate that. They will go and self-regulate as needed, meaning that they will go from one end of the bin and back again. <clears throat> they do hide under the bark, 
they eat the bark. Um, this is where most of the mankai or babies tend to congregate. Safety in numbers and all that. Uh, most people have feeding dishes of some sort. They use a seashell. They seem to like it. It stops the rapashi and vegetables and mealworms from going directly on the substrate and promoting mold growth. The springtails that inhabit the bin with the isopods also help as a cleanup crew for them. The parameters that I would recommend keeping the magic potion isopods at uh, would mimic basic household environments. Uh, so temperatures between 60 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit and a humidity level about 50 to percent. Uh, these guys do need some humidity to have proper molting. However, too much humidity will cause them to die off. Um, I have noticed this in the past. Living in Florida, we have a lot of humidity. So I generally like to keep these guys um, in an air-conditioned room with a ceiling fan ventilating the room so the humidity doesn't build up and create overcondensation in the bin. This species prefers a lot of calcium. I have some oyster shell flakes sprinkled throughout the substrate um, and on top of it. I also give cuddle bone as needed. These look like they are due for another one. Once the husk of the cuddle bone is apparent, I usually switch it out. I'll either throw away the cuddle bone or crush it up and just mix it in the substrate. I also feed these guys uh, reptocalcium without vitamin D, uh, the powder form. You can just sprinkle it in as you give them their food. Um, their food, they do like vegetation. They will eat romaine lettuce quite readily. So if you put them in a planted terrarium, make sure to keep that in mind. Uh, they like vegetables. Pumpkin and sweet potato is another favorite. They prefer dried minnows, uh, dried river shrimp, and dried mealworms for protein. They also have been known to eat uh, dried egg shells. Just, you know, leftovers from making scrambled eggs in the kitchen. Leave your egg shells to dry out on the countertop after you rinse them. And then crush them up and the isopods will devour them. Uh, and that is about it. These guys are ready for a leaf litter top up. Um, right now you can see sycamore leaves, uh, which is what I tend to use. Um, it's local to me, so that's what I use. They seem to really like it. Uh, I don't worry about the leaves being perfectly formed or anything, uh, as long as they are baked in the oven at 200, 250 degrees for about 20 to 30 minutes to kill off any pests that we don't want uh, attacking our isopods, then it's fine. This leaf litter will last them about a week and then it'll be time to top them up again. I'm also gonna go ahead and drop a few mealworms in here for them. Um, Saturday, they like mealworms. Pretty soon, that little pile will be gone. I'll probably add a couple more. It won't hurt anything. And there you go. Uh, these guys also, before I forget, 
um, they like a medium depth of substrate. So in a 12 quart bin, you're thinking about maybe three inches. In a six quart bin, I would say maybe two, two and a half inches, almost halfway up to your uh, container. And there you go. That is the Armdalidium Bulgari Magic Potion, the Japanese line. I just redid this bin in November, uh, changed out the substrate. You will have to do that once every six months to a year just to stop the ammonia buildup in the substrate and to keep the bin fresh for your ice pods.